The beauty industry is constantly changing and staying ahead of the curve is essential. Today, we're talking about the biggest roadblocks to your salon growth, how to understand them, to see them and take action. Hi, I am Kayla Swanson and I am your host of the Profitable Saloner podcast. And this episode is brought to you by Salon Skill, the ultimate salon back bar management app built by salon owners for salon owners. Salon Skill is designed to turn your salon back bar into a profit center, manage back bar formulas, product cost, and inventory. Click the link to get 10% off your annual subscription. And hanging out with me today is Vivian McKinder. What's up, Vivian? How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, man, it's so excited. I'm really excited for you guys to, to listen to today's podcast because it's going to be, we were talking a little bit before and I'm just excited. I'm like, man, there's a lot of you out there who need to hear what we're about to talk about today. So Vivian, tell me a little bit about yourself. I've been in the business now for, gosh, over 40 years. Um, originally trained in the UK. I was artistic director for Sassoon's and Trevor Sorby, two of the iconic um, salons in the world. Um, wow. I traveled the world doing uh, shows, photo shoots, training their teams. Um, so I've had my hands in many pots. And um, now I'm here in the United States and I have an online educational company, which is now celebrating its 20th year. So wow. I've been online a long time. <laughs> no kidding. And congratulations, 20 years is a long time. That's so beautiful. So tell me a little bit about like, what is your heart and your passion? Because you have an education center here. So tell me like, what is your heart and passion in this world? What do you want to accomplish? I love creating beauty always mm. loved transformation, always loved taking somebody from where they are and making them the best version of themselves, whether it be a model, whether it be a, a runway show, uh, or whether it just be the client in the salon. Getting the right look on the right person, to me, is an art. Mm. Many of us can learn how to do techniques, but the game changer that separates the good from the great is, is that discernment and that trained eye to know when to say yes or no and why. And I love sharing that with other hairdressers because I've been very privileged in my career to have worked with the best of the best of the best, like the, the most major hairdressers. I could call them right now and have a conversation and work with them. And I've always been in that circle. And not everyone has that privilege either because they're the demographic of where they live or the age that they are in the industry. So I love now to share what I learned from my private time with Vidal, what I yeah. like to share with the iconic hairdressers that are working with major celebrities, because I can have a real nice chit chat with them. And, you know, I can talk to a Danilo and find out, you know, how's it been? You've been doing Gwen Stefani's hair for 20 mm -hmm. years and you're doing Scarlett Johansson and name dropping and name dropping. Not that he does that. I just ask. And we have these amazing conversations and I'm always learning. I all, I'm a lifelong learner. So I then want to take back whatever I learn from wherever it may be and then share that so I can serve and help other people. Wow. That's huge. What a beautiful opportunity you've gotten to have. And yeah, like seeing like people who are like are in like the film industry or even like getting to be a part of that world. It's almost like different, it's like fast paced and it's almost a different experience. And you've gotten the pleasure of getting to experience that and then bring those, those nuggets, those things that you've learned in that industry and what's different and how quickly you have to change and keeping up with trends. And how do you like, how do you keep ahead of that? And so I'm so excited. So if you're listening and this is like, man, this is really interesting. I've never thought about this before. I'm really excited for you to hear what Vivian has to say, because we're going to dive into that and the things that she's seen in that industry and bringing those and bringing that to here so you can hear it today. So Vivian, talk to me a little bit about what you've seen. Where would you start to begin as like one of the big pivotal things that you've seen that people like maybe mistakes people are making that you see in the industry right now? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have, and I think we all have a love-hate relationship with social mm -hmm. media because we can go down that rabbit hole. And they say that the average person in the United States will spend two hours a day, which equals for the year, 30 days of your life on social media. So that's fine if it produces the result mm -hmm. and that you know your why that you're going there. You know, is it filling time? What is it doing? And mm -hmm. I've just been recently doing a very interesting personal test because I've always been about innovation and not copying. 
That's always mm. been uh, and I was I was raised that way, and there's a little bit of a rebel within me where I don't want to conform. But I thought, you know, it'd be very very interesting. I'm working with this amazing group of hairdressers. I said, you know, it, let's let's tear down a reel and let's tear down a photograph from social, and let's see if we can really recreate it. And before I even did that, I said, you know, how many of you have been challenged to recreate a look? A client brings in a photograph. She says, I want that. And you're going, oh my gosh, well, I, I can only see the back. How's the side? How's the front? How does this suit her face shape, right? And so you have one part of a recipe, but you don't have the full recipe. Also, mm. the client's falling in love very often with a beautiful looking woman with amazing hair because the, the reels and the social that get the most views is not an unattractive lady and it's not thin sparse hair it's the best of the best otherwise it wouldn't have all the people following it right, That's right. And, and the advertising industry always still in, in spite of like the dove campaign of real people and real beauty which i get but when people are looking for inspiration they're going to buy skincare from that model that has flawless skin, not pimples and bumps, right? So the reality is we are not always working with an oil painting sitting in our chair, but we're expected, and the better you are, you're expected to bring out that magic wand and recreate that look. And what happens is you set yourself up to fail because if you don't know the technique and you can't adapt it, so on and so forth, and you don't know how to say to the client, no, this will not work. Great reference, but this is why it won't work. That's that's a courage comment, right? So I've been tearing them down and it's been so fascinating. And what I realized from working with these hairdressers, they get disheartened. They feel like a failure. They feel yeah. discouraged. They feel like they're not good enough. And instead of saying, right, who am I going to go to learn this from? A lot of them close down. So my second part of this story about where we have to move to because the game has changed, a client came into the salon, had a photo reference of a celebrity and said, I'd like this hairstyle. Can anyone do that? There was no one in the salon that could do the hairstyle. And guess what the hairstyle was? It was a pixie haircut, the 101 of basic haircutting, and no one could do it. And the client left the salon and the comment from the hairdresser was oh no i don't do that so what we have groomed and i love this are painters of hair i love i love long hair i love it in all aspects but if you narrow down to just doing long layers and painting hair and balayage and ombre when the fashion boat moves on you'll be left behind and we're now facing a huge challenge in our industry where young hairdressers today are scared to cut hair short they can't visualize how to cut hair short they are playing it safe and not everyone should wear a curtain fringe not everyone should wear long hair not everyone should wear short hair we are in the couture business designing to who is sitting in our chair and not designing what's comfortable for me. That is the number one problem in our industry right now and is being fed by very savvy consumers who spend time researching and say, I want this and this and this. And a caveat to this, I, I um, was talking to a lady in Germany about her experience of going into the salon and she said, I, I always have a consultation. And she said, I pay for my consultation. She said, I'm not going to waste time looking for fo through photographs. My, I expect my hairdresser to tell me. So guess what? In this country, the statistics are extraordinary. 97% of hairdressers say they give a consultation. And only 7% of clients say they receive a consultation. Whoa. That's a big difference. That's crazy. Why do you think that that is? What are we doing today? The same as last time. Okay. Did it work out okay? Off we go. Versus mm -hmm. a deep dive into personality, into lifestyle, really analyzing the how that client is aging and what's age appropriate, body type, width of shoulder, length of neck, understanding face shape, 
understanding profile, understanding how to open and close the face, understanding how that every woman face can be made more beautiful understanding mm. how to elevate the face to like take 10 years off of her look by making her look more youthful all of those things are not what are we doing today wow i got so captivated by what you were saying because it's so fascinating and i'm not honestly haven't had this conversation on the podcast before where you're sharing about like how people are getting stuck in in their ways stuck in like in um coloring the way that they color, like, yeah, blondes and balayage and like these like same five different styles of, of how you color hair and the same kind of five haircuts or whatever it is. It's like whatever number it is, the same amount. And that's, and everybody's learning the same things, but they're not learning the beauty and the technique of the art of doing hair and how like you think about more than just the formulas that you're using. You're thinking about like, first you think about how would this hair look on this person? Are you doing hair because they want it based off a picture? You able to tell them, no, I don't think this hair would look good on you. And you come, you position yourself as the expert when people come to you and people are instead they're they're just learning formulas and memorizing lines and doing those kinds of things instead of looking at their art as like, I'm showing up because I'm the expert and I know the technique and I know what's going to look well to help their clients and their guests look their best rather than just do what they're asking. Is that kind of what you're saying? Are you ready to increase your retention and revenue and convert website traffic to clients? Then you're ready for Maya. Maya creates better business relationships by pairing the right clients with the right beauty professionals. Use promo code HPSA for your first two months free. Visit joinmaya.com to get started. We're Forest, born on the salon floor and built for and by hair and beauty professionals like you. Forest is your marketing, your reporting, your reputation management. You need one easy to use system that does it all. Forest, together we grow. Yeah, well, you know, it's very easy. I, I, I see types of hairdressers. So there's the puppet, right? Right? Mm -hmm. um, which is the client saying, I want this hairstyle, I want it like this, and keep looking in the mirror, measuring, you know, or is, isn't it going a little too short? And they have come in with total control, and now they're, expect now they're pulling your strings. Mm -hmm. right? And what happens is it disempowers you, because you're trying in your own way to please the client, but she's not the one with the tools in her hand. She's not the mm. one that understands the difference between a concave layer, a uh, an invisible ghost layer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you have a client saying, I just want one layer. Okay, so where's that one layer going to sit? You know, like, would you like the scissors and show me where that one layer is going to be, right? <laughs> and, and so you have the puppet whose strings are being pulled. And in essence, we all have a bit of a puppet in us because we want to please. And then we have the person who is the entertainer. I'm going to entertain you with my woo, my charm. I'm going to use my charisma. And I'm going to get you to feel super comfortable by entertaining you. And I'm going to tell you stories. And it's exhausting being the entertainer, right? Yeah. And often, because you're entertaining, you're not able to give the quality of work that you'd like to do because you can only focus on one thing at a time. Right. And if you're entertaining because you feel you need to, now what's happening to the thought process of how am I holding the hair? What am I doing here? I'm using my mirror. Like what's happening to that narrative, which is your internal conversation. Right. And then you have the artist. Well, if I'm inspired, I will create today a masterpiece. And if I'm not, stars aren't in alignment. I'm not going to create my mom today. <laughs> so there's the client that's going in, well, when they're in a good mood, it's amazing, but sometimes they're off, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the hairdresser who's the technician. They don't say a word. They're technically working away, very precise, and they're doing this amazing work. And very often they've forgotten about the human touch. And then the final one that I see is the pedal store, where social media is strong for them. They're in a fabulous salon. They're doing really well. It's really hard to get into that, that, that stylist. And now they're on a pedal store. So now that client thinks they can perform a miracle. Mm. <laughs> and we have a little bit of all. What we have to say is ask ourselves, which am I playing and which serves me the best? Mm. Because I think, and I love what you're saying in that, because like what serves me the best, because there's a little bit of like, we're all individuals, right? We all have like our own flavor personality that we bring to our, our work or what we're doing and, and everything we did, whether you're a hairdresser or anything that you are. 
And so what you're saying is like, yeah, you, there are these, I love how you define them and there's different ways and you kind of need a little bit of all of them, but you got to see also like where they fit in and just be aware. What are the different personalities? How do you show up when you show up with your guests and then they're in the chair and you show up to do their hair? Which one are, of those do you resonate more with? And which one are you leaning more towards and where you're forgetting about the rest? Are you getting too technical? Are you getting too, too animated or too um, entertaining? Are you getting like where, like look at yourself and see what part of those areas am I strong in? What am I weak in? Or what do I, what should I be more of? Not necessarily to be something that you're not, but just to realize who you are as a person and how those things affect the person in your chair and affects your work at the end of the day and how you're interacting with your guests, which I love the point that you brought up. Well, you know what it affects too is your happiness. Mm, And such a good point. In the business world, how, if you are happy in what you do, you're more productive, your sales are higher your creativity flourishes, your health is better. And I've been those five characters in my career. Mm -hmm. And I've been in situations, whether it be working with a celebrity or on a photo shoot or feeling very small, where I became so subservient and I didn't trust myself and I didn't bring the best self to the table because somewhere along the line, I felt small. And I think that when we feel small because of a role that we're playing, a story that we've told ourselves, because we all have our story. So if I'm showing up feeling very small because this person's famous and I'm in this incredible venue and I'm feeling small and small and small and say a production person or an art director comes in and they have this cutting comment that cuts right through you. We know in business, we're always told, don't take it personally. That's really hard to do. And and if you can get through the personal stuff in like, okay, taking it personally, right, release. Okay, now let's focus on the problem. It's not about me. It's like, let's get focused on the problem, right? <laughs> it's a yes. totally different ball game. but I've experienced it all, which is why when I work with people now, coaching them and working with them one-to-one, I can see in a second, oh my gosh, we've got to work on this puppet. You know, and then I have to be the encourager, like believe in the quality of your skills, you know, and that's how you can start to open the flower. And at the end of the day, try and create more happiness, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, because you get into the beauty industry because you want to serve people and you love doing hair and whatever reason brought you here, you want to build your career doing something that you love. And then, yeah, the minute you start getting smaller, start comparing yourself to others or you try to be like, well, I want to be a stylist like them. I think you need to realize that you need to be a stylist like you, that you got in this industry for a reason and you bring a special skill set that nobody else has. And so being able to harness that and to channel in of like, getting confident in yourself is such a powerful point. Vivian, I love what you just said about that because I think that so many people do, they lose their confidence or they get kind of like in this repetition of just trying to be like everybody else and trying to be good enough for social media and trying to be good enough for what's out there and trying to be good enough for everybody else and not realize that like who they are and the talent that they have is incredible just as it is. And I love the point that you're making. I love this and I want to make sure that we touch on. So in the realization, if you're listening to this, you're like, wow, what a realization to some that maybe I haven't thought of before. Vivian, what is some ways, so what are some action points that we can take as people listening, they walk away, what are some action that that they can take today that can start changing their mindset and making steps that could change their career? Well, I think the number one thing we need to do in our craft is up our game in consultation. And Mm -hmm. that's something that I have been training people on intensely because I think you need to do an inventory. Am I an order taker? Or am I giving incredible professional advice that's objective? Mm -hmm. It's not me biased. It's seeing who the character is that's sitting in my chair. What is her personality? Mm -hmm. Designing from the inside to the outside. So I say, number one, start working on your consultation. If you need guidance, I have training that that covers all of that. How to see a face shape, et cetera, et cetera. So that's number one. Number two, you've got to look at the foundational designs that we have in our in our world for example if you do a google search on the most sought after hairstyle long hair is not the number one searched hairstyle wow bobs pixies lobs they're shorter hairstyles and Mm -hmm. long layered hairstyles is way 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 down on the list so You've got to be able to look at your your repertoire of skills and say, where are the gaps in in my skill set? And 
I think, you know, you can go out there and watch thousands of videos on all the free platforms, right? But there's a huge difference when you immerse yourself in a real training that has mm. building blocks and you get feedback, building blocks and feedback. And that is very important. So you've got the consultation, you've got your inventory check on your, your skill set. I'm, I'm referencing hair cutting right now, but it goes across the board, right, with everything. Yeah. And it's looking at what is my brand? What is my signature look? And what's the shelf life of it? Because it will pass. And mm. the happiest people that I know are those who are constantly progressing. They don't walk backwards and say, oh, no, I can't do it. They say, well, I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to learn from the best of the best. And just because someone has a YouTube video does not mean they're an expert. Like I've watched YouTube <laughs> videos that have completely freaked me out where I see <laughs> trick and trick and trick and trick and trick. And I'm going, they just did seven tricks to cut a fringe. I could just do that in one move and be done and dusted and it wouldn't be overcut. Like, why would you do two haircuts on someone when they're paying for one service? Yeah, everyone thinks people are trying to look impressive. Well, but they they do a basic haircut and then they go in and detail it and detail it mm -hmm. and detail it and cut it again and again. If you do it right the first time, why would you want to detail it? You, you got it right. right, but that's a method. It's a system. So have discernment to surround yourself and work with the best of the best. And what I have realized, because I've been in the online business for quite some time, what I realize is the old style of learning showing up for a model night once a week in the salon, going to a workshop, going to a look and learn or whatever, whatever, whatever. Those are little nuggets that are wonderful experiences, right? But mm -hmm. the transformation is so tiny because habits take a lot time, a long time to break. And my mm -hmm. training's about, I show you something, we do it live, like virtual live, and we take a baby step. And then I say, right, this week, just measure faces. I don't want you to do anything else. This week, I just want you to do the consultation. Don't want you to do anything else. I only want to do one consultation using my one. So I give people baby, 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 baby steps. And that's where I see the most major transformations I've ever seen in my business. I've got with people now within 10 months who are saying, Viv, I've been in the business for 30 years and I'm now for the first time made a six-figure income. Like, Wow. What happened to those, all those years wasted because you didn't know different. And I have people that are increasing their earnings by 50% in 10 months because they wow. are going through a transformation versus trick haircutting. Wow. Big difference. So when I love, I love what you're saying. So I want to, something I'm curious about. So you're talking about like, what is the gap in like, cause people go to beauty school. So where is beauty school like missing the mark that people are coming out of beauty school, getting into haircuts and they, are they just cutting off their continued education? Where is beauty school missing the mark in terms of helping people get more prepared for the industry? Ready to transform your business and improve your salon's profitability? With Lonza's three-in-one technology and intermixable shades, your hair color inventory is streamlined with limitless creativity behind the chair. Click the link below to unveil the secret to salon success. Are you tired of not knowing what your hair color is costing you? With Salon Scale, we take the guesswork out for you so you can cover your back bar expenses, reduce your color waste, and generate more profit in your salon. Click the link in the description to get 10% off your first year. Sustain Beauty Co. has two of the best tools to help you save water, time, and a bunch of money. Join the clean water salon movement with EcoHead's water-saving shampoo nozzles and scrummy plant-based microfiber towels. Available at sustainbeauty.co. Well, in the United States, I'm presuming most of your audience is American, correct? Okay. Um, or Canadian, yeah. Uh, Canadian. Okay. Canadian and American have a similar schooling system. In the UK, we have three year training. Here in the mm -hmm. United States, it's hours, right? It's based on hours. Yeah. It's not based on years and years and years. Um, in Germany, uh, I think they have now five years. Australia has three years. So America and Canada has the shortest training anywhere in the world. So that wow. puts a lid on the curriculum, correct? Yes. Um, very, very often you've got teachers in school that have never worked in a salon. They graduated from that school and now they're a teacher. So you're not necessarily having highly qualified people training you. 
so the training is a huge issue because they come out of school with a very high uh, fee in terms of what they pay for their education and they are totally unprepared because the government's very involved in the education mm. in this country. In my country, the government's not involved. If I want to go and open a school, I can do it right now. I can do what I want, how I want, wow. and I can make money. Here, you can't do that. So you've got wow. all of these rules that are restricting the growth. And people will say, well, no one would show up for two years. What if your training's outstanding? They would. And if they came out with so much skill that they're not going to have to spend two more years as an apprentice, because here in New York, it's very common, two years apprenticing. I'm about accelerating that training, making it quicker and effective. But the problem is, do you know, 85% of students graduating from cosmetology school in two years would have quit the industry. Wow. Because they come out with unrealistic notions about our industry and they mm. don't realize what it takes to be in business and to grow your brand. They have no wow. idea. So the uh, I, it sounds like I'm being very critical of the school system. If I could shake it up and create like my dream version of it, I would. But yeah. it's, it's almost a waste of time because the government is too involved in the rules and the regulations and the this and the that. And the proof is in the pudding. What yeah. are we producing? How challenging is it for a salon owner to find somebody with that right aptitude and attitude and that passion to be a lifelong learner? They're like, oh, I want to go on the floor right now. Well, you could be dangerous and you could destroy my brand. Hello. Right. Yeah, so, right. so there are, there are, the, 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 and then they're looking at these reels and they're looking at hair being done in, you know, three seconds or whatever it may be. <laughs> The new one is three seconds. You've got to be able to tame someone for three seconds. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> so, yes, very. so they're being fed information. They're watching things that are not realistic. And yeah. they're filtered, they're edited, and they're wonderful to watch, but they're not real. I have discernment. Yeah. I can tell that hair was took maybe an hour to prep. I can tell that was so heavily edited down. They edited out all the challenges, all the mistakes. That person rehearsed it like 30 times before they went live on camera. Now you're seeing slide, 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 point, point, voila. And they went, that is so easy. I can do that. So now you've hired somebody with that mindset. And you're saying as a salon owner, right, we're going to go put you through a training program. Oh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no. I love, I love what you're saying here. And I love the points that you're making and just being, just realizing in yourself. Cause I know like you, if, you know, if you are in America or can Canada or you are like, well, that is my reality. That's what I have. It's like, you can't change the school system. You can't change how it is working and how you're getting educated, but you can change when you come out of school and you start your job, you can change how you pursue education. Even now, as you're continuing in your career, what, what are your priorities? Do you come out of school and be like, okay, I've, I've learned everything. I'm good. I'm just going to use experience. Like how are you educating? yourself? What are you looking for? Making sure you get educated on who is out there educating and the styles and techniques and people are not like overcutting and overdoing things and trying to show you something because they're trying to look cool on the internet. Find the people that genuinely teach you well is very important. So before we wrap up, and this has been absolutely incredible, I would love to, because typically most of our audience are salon owners. So what are some, what is some advice that you would give to the owners to take this back to their salons and how can the owners in their salons with their stylists and their teams be able to make different decisions in their salon to support their team and what we've talked about today? I, number one, I think you, if you view your salon as a an academy as well as a salon that you're always invested in lifelong learning and you only hire people who are addicted to education and addicted to learning by that alone you have a team that's constantly growing and in a team there's the strength there's the collective power of ideas and sharing i always feel like when i have a salon owner come and train with me and they bring their staff along it is 10 times more effective because the salon owner is the leader and they are sharing and, and they're setting an example. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So, you know, as a leader, if you have a lead, 
on your leadership skills, you're blocking everybody else's potential. So it starts with hiring, not just a pretty face, not even someone who's good, any good at doing hair. It's hiring the right mindset. And then if you have an established training program, especially if you have something where it's it, you have a certified proper, proper training program that people are investing in and it, and that's, that's your bragging rights that we have this training system and we, you know, our, our staff are certified and so on and so forth. You've got the, the education's the glue in the good times and the bad times. Mm -hmm. And it's wow. the glue to not want to leave and just go off by yourself because you'll miss the team. You know, you may go somewhere quicker by yourself, but you'll never go further by yourself so mm. team is everything and that leadership has to start with the owner as to this is my vision and this is what i want my team and my brand to be and it's a great stylist is it's not about me it's about you so when my client's sitting in the chair it's not hi i'm vivian it's like wow there you are it's about mm. them it's not about me but the salon owner has such a challenging job pleasing two different groups the stylists and the clients yeah. and they need total different leadership management inspiration and, and that's so important but i would say you know it, it's it's really taking a good look at your educational program Can, is it measurable are, are there benchmarks where you can actually see the progression is it producing six-figure income hairdressers is it producing extraordinary, well-rounded hairdressers? Or is it just like, oh, well, you know, we're doing kind of the same as everybody else in town. What's your point of difference, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that all comes from how you hire first and, and having a training system that is so solid. It's not, well, I've got this really great hairdresser. She's a great stylist. And sometimes she teaches okay and sometimes she doesn't. She's a great stylist. She may not be a great teacher. Yeah. Right? It's a difference. Very different. It's a big difference. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much. This has been, that was, that, that last gold nugget was just so huge. And I know that you've heard us say it in the here before where people will leave your salon if they don't see their future with you any further and people are hungry for more. And if you don't teach them, they're going to go find it on the internet and it's not going to teach them very well. The internet is great for some things, but it's not great for furthering education and showing people reality of what's real versus what's not. You can't tell unless Vivian who can, has the experience be like, Oh, I can tell they took a lot of time on that, but people are going to go and find find education somewhere. If you have your salon, be the hub for education, be a place where people are growing and learning and excelling in their career and becoming six figure earners, which is what every, what's, what's what they want to become, then they're never going to leave. If you treat them. And I love what you said, Vivian, about how you have your guests and you have your, and you have your staff and they're different and you have to manage them different. And it all comes down to leadership. What a powerful podcast. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you want more information on Vivian, you can find more information for her in the description, you can get to know her and follow her on social media and get just see all the things. And thank you so much, Vivian. This has been such a beautiful time hanging out. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We'll see you next time on the Profitable Salon Owner Podcast. See you later. You've been listening to the Profitable Salon Owner Podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a review, and check us out at ProfitableSalon.com for more episodes, content, and to help you turn your salon into the business you've always dreamt of.